welcome to Hillbilly Wing DVD Reviews. I'm your host, the Hillbilly Skeleton, and today we're going to be reviewing the Blu-ray of... Stir of Echoes. Stir of Echoes is a great little effective little horror flick from 1999. A lot of people don't remember it though because it came out like, unfortunately, like a month or something after The Sixth Sense. You know, motherfuckers just jerking off, jerking off The Sixth Sense, Hallie Joel Osment shit. They weren't ready to give a, you know, another ghost story a fucking chance at the time. So, you know, it came out. It didn't flop, but it didn't do good business either. So a lot of people forgotten about it. The movie's based on an old story from Richard Matheson, great legendary writer from I Am Legend and shit. You know, so it's got a good fucking story basis for idea. And directed by David Cup. A lot of people know him actually as a writer, writing big movies like Jurassic Park, Spider Man. He directed a little flick called The Trigger Effect. And then this was the second film he directed. And unfortunately, he's went on to direct a lot of fucking bullshit like Premium Rush with Joseph Gordon Levitt. But this is back in the day, man, when he was doing smaller flicks, directing them and shit, making them fucking good. Thing I like about this flick is it's a ghost flick, but it ain't nothing like these PG-13 bullshit ghost flicks he got now with CGI motherfuckers. There ain't really no CGI in this fucking thing. And it ain't about a ghost terrorizing people and shit. It's about a ghost haunting people. Not fucking killing people and snapping their necks and shit. Haunting people. That's what the fuck ghosts are supposed to do, motherfucker. They're supposed to haunt you. So it takes place in Chicago. Kevin Bacon, he's got a little boy, he's got a wife, he's like a telephone pole repairman, whatever the fuck they call them guys. You know, they just live in a nice middle class background. They move into a new house at the rent and shit. There's a big block party going on, maybe it's a welcome party, I don't know, maybe just down in Chicago motherfuckers just like to get drunk in the street. So go over to his neighbor house. His fucking annoying ass sister-in-law, she's at the party and shit, she, she's real horny, played by Eliana Douglas, she's always talking about getting dick, getting dick, she never gets dick in the movie, but that's all she fucking talks about, anyway, she's some kind of hypno whatever, put motherfuckers into trances and shit, and Kevin Bacon says, this is bullshit, you're full of shit, I've known you for years, like, you ain't, you can't do shit, so she hypnotized him at a party, and it turns out, he's one of these people that are real susceptible to getting hypnotized and shit, so he really goes deep into the fucking sleep and shit, and I gotta say, this is a lot of people's favorite scene from the movie, and I really like a lot too like like she tells him to picture himself in an old movie theater he's in a movie theater picture the walls turning black you see the walls turning black all set of floating he's fucking in a chair floating and fucking through the air and shit it's really cool special effects man all done practically and shit they had this motherfucker on wires and it, it but it looks 100 percent real man you can't tell it's like fake looking at all anyway he wakes up out of it he's like oh fucking freaked out because he don't know what happened to him shit while he's asleep motherfuckers are drawing dicks on his face fucking you know pulling their cocks out doing whatever they fucking stuck a safety pin all the way through his hand and shit and actually do a flashback where they show that safety pin and what's crazy is the director on the commentary revealed that they really did stick a fucking pin through some motherfuckers. Not Kevin Bacon's hand, because he's a movie star and shit, but they got some, I don't know, fucking goth punk motherfucker just stuck a needle through his hand and filmed it and shit and then sent that motherfucker on his way. So really the movie starts to take a turn here. Kevin Bacon, his little boy, is always talking to some imaginary friend motherfuckers. You know, there's, oh, he's a little boy and shit. He's just making shit up. But of course, as being a horror flick, whatever, we know when little kids talk to somebody you can't see, it ain't an imaginary friend. It's a fucking ghost. So Kevin Bacon starts realizing his, something going on with his little boy and then it starts happening to Kevin Bacon too. He starts seeing shit out of the corner of his eye. He's getting sick and shit. He's getting worried. Basically, he starts seeing this young girl, teenage girl, man, fucking, you know, looking dead and shit, coming after him, fucking popping out and shit, having visions of her, and, like, he's really freaking the fuck out, man. Starts acting really strange. And I gotta say, that's really one of the best things about this movie. It really gets psychological. Kevin Bacon, man, he is a good fucking actor whenever he's in a good movie, and, like, you see him really playing and changing it. And on top of it, he does the whole movie with a fucking Chicago accent. So, you know, like, he's doing an accent, and he's hauled him by a ghost and shit, man. That's a real fucking good actor right there. There ain't a lot of whole I can talk about without revealing shit, but basically this girl got murdered in the house that he's renting. Like he finds out who she was in real life. She's been missing for six months. Nobody cares. Like she had, I, they don't really say, but like she had something mentally. So she was just kind of like a slow girl that was always walking around on the street and shit. Nobody cared about her, which is fucking sad. But anyway, this girl disappeared and like. Kevin Bacon, like, he's realized, I gotta solve the crime, man. Like, she's reaching out from beyond the grave and shit. She's forcing me. She ain't gonna stop haunting me. I can't get the shit out of my head. He tries to get unhypnotized. That shit doesn't fucking work. So anyway, as the movie wraps up, basically, as he gets closer to solving the story, and he's going crazier and crazier, man. He fucking digs up the whole backyard and shit looking for the body. He's looking for the body in the basement and shit. Finally, he finds the body, and that's when the fucking the race to the finish, the what's gonna happen and shit goes on. And that's what I like about this movie. It ain't the ghost killing people. It's fucking trying to solve the mystery of why the ghost is haunting people. And then the motherfuckers you gotta worry about is the people that don't want you to solve that mystery and shit. So this is what I would really call an adult fucking horror flick, man. Because, like, they really, you know, tell the story in a good emotional way. 
dramatize it and shit. It just ain't cheap thrills. Ain't there's there's I don't even think there's any fucking jump scares in this man. It's just the the creepiness, the haunting, the tension building up, the danger from the fucking real life people that you got to worry about coming after your shit. Being a horror movie that fucking gets its scares, gets its tension the fucking hard way by building it with good drama and shit. I love Star Echoes, man. Had a great time with this motherfucking movie. Star Echoes, I gotta give it eight out of ten. Alright, picture and sound, this is where it gets a little mmm. Because the thing is, this is actually one of the very first Blu rays ever fucking released. This Blu ray came out like two months after Blu ray, the players and shit come out. So, you know, like a movie that they put on Blu ray 10 years ago, whatever, ain't going to be the same as the movie you get now, right? It doesn't look bad. It looks like a film print, but it just doesn't look quite as sharp. The colors are intentionally muted, so it ain't really showing off the format too much. You know, they didn't know all the little trick tips and tricks and where the fuck to make the blur rays really pop out and shit so yeah so some people give this fucking you know picture wise a shitty review and stuff it's all right man it looks like a good film print and that's kind of what i like that it does look so film like a little soft but that's okay because that's how film stock is the sound is fucking good it ain't hd master audio but it is dts hd that's a little step below but it's still fucking anything better that you're going to get on dvd and shit Full surround sound track going on, fucking, you know, it ain't too active and shit, but it does, you know, get you into the movie and shit. It's picture and sound, being older and shit, you can't expect too much, but it's still just being a decent presentation of the film. I gotta give it on picture sound, 6 out of 10. Alright, special features, this ain't a full-blown special edition and shit, it has a little bit. They have something on here called the Sight of Spirits, Channeling the Paranormal. And I gotta say, man, this is like, I don't know if you guys ever noticed this. They used to do this on Blu-rays and DVDs. If it was like a made-up, crazy, supernatural movie, they try to get some real-life experts. And that's what this documentary is. It's like a real-life guy who claims he can see these ghosts and shit. And, it, it, and like he talks about his experiences with solving crimes and shit similar to this movie. But what's actually cool is he talks about, he did watch the movie, and he talks about the shit in the movie, how close it is to real life. And he says the, you know, the filmmakers did a good fucking job portraying this supernatural bullshit. Also, they got deleted scenes, but I gotta admit, man, it's like watching some... It's not even really deleted scenes, it's mostly uh, just like extended scenes of shit you see in the movie just a little bit longer. There is one funny scene, that's a true deleted scene, where like, I don't know what the scene was, but there's supposed to be some kids, like, walking up to a fence, getting a reaction to some shit happening. And like, the audio, because they were just extras, they weren't talking, you just hear the director tell them what to do. And he's like, he's like, he's like, Johnny, Johnny, come to the fence, <laughs> let's do that. Karen, turn your head, run away. Like, I don't know, it's just kind of funny actually hearing the director direct some extra motherfucker walk around and shit. Then they got the audio commentary with director David Quepp. I keep saying Quepp. I really don't know. Maybe it's Cop. I'm not sure how you say it. It's K-O-E-P-P. -P. Sorry if I'm gonna fuck your name up, David. But anyway, this is the best extra, man. He talks about his career and shit and why he wanted to make this movie. And, and like, he, he tells you a lot of tips and tricks and special effects, how they did it. Because like I said, there really isn't CGI in this movie. It's a lot of old school film tips and tricks of cutting and editing and shooting shit the right way. So yeah, special features. This ain't a special edition. Some of it's a little mm, bullshitty. Some of it's okay. So special features are going to give a fucking 5 out of 10. Alright, so that's the Year of Echoes, that's the fucking one I wanted to save the Halloween review, because, I mean, all these slasher flicks, werewolf flicks and shit, I've been reviewing this week as the guest reviewer, Hillbilly Skeleton, they were fun and shit, but this was the one, you know, me being a skeleton motherfucker, this is the one that actually really scared me. Actually, that's not true, I gotta be honest with you, I'm, I'm not really a fucking uh, skeleton and shit. I'm just, you know, I just put some makeup on my face and told you I was a skeleton and shit. So hopefully, you know, you don't, you know, fucking this shit is all greasy and I've been sweating and shit, man. My hair is fucking getting all stuck to my face and shit. So hopefully you don't hold it against us that I bullshit you. But I was trying to get you back into the Halloween spirit because I know a lot of motherfuckers really ain't getting into the spirit anymore. Just Halloween become another day to them and shit. So yeah, hope you had a great... Come on, don't get sad, man. Come on, come on. No, it's Halloween. I'm sorry, man. I shouldn't have fucking told you I wasn't really a skeleton. Look, look. It is real. It is real. See? See, I'm really a skeleton, motherfucker. See, doo, 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 doo. I'm a skeleton. Ha, ha. You might fucking see me pop out of your bed and shit. I'm really a skeleton. All right, so thank you for joining us for Hillbilly Ween DVD Reviews Halloween Horror Movie Week. Hope you had a great time this week. Hope you have a good time trick-or-treating with all the ghouls tonight. Go out, have fun, have a good time. Get drunk as fuck. Fuck girls in slutty Halloween costumes. Do whatever you want. Just don't drink and drive. But remember, as always, Hillbilly DVD Reviews wants you to have... A happy Halloween! Ah.